All right, so today we are gonna start talking about polar coordinates, which the coordinates that you are used to are called rectangular coordinates. So you'll see that language in this section, and if you've never seen it before, rectangular coordinates are just what you're used to, your X and your Y ordered pair. So we can also, polar coordinates are based upon the idea that we can also represent a point by its distance from the origin and the angle that's formed by the terminal side through the point. So in polar coordinates are instead of X comma Y, we have R comma theta. So R being the radius, which is the distance from the origin, um, and then theta being the angle um, in standard position. So in example one, all we're doing is just practicing plotting each point. So in a polar coordinate plane, uh, kind of looks like a spider web, each little tick mark on the circles. Um, so we have a bunch of concentric circles in there with obviously different radii drawn through them. Each of those little tick marks represents a distance of one. So the very first one would be a radius of one, then two, three, four. Um, on this particular polar grid, the um, last one is five. So when it says five 120, um, that means it's gonna be on the outmost, outermost circle there. So 120 degrees, if we're looking here, this one doesn't have the 45s like the unit circle does, but you can see where 90 is and you can see that each 90 is divided into thirds. So each um, positioning of the next radius is 30 degrees from the last one. So 120 degrees would be starting um, at our traditional um, spot and um, going over to here would be the terminal side. So that means that the point 5, 120 would be right here because it's the fifth circle out 120 degrees from that positive x axis. So this guy right here we would label with its coordinates five comma 120 degrees. So this is point A. Point B, negative five 120. So I wanted to do these back to back because when you have a negative radius, all that means is that you're gonna go the opposite direction. So if I've gone 120 degrees, that lands me right here normally. The um, radius that makes an actual line or straight angle with it is the one that's gonna have the negatives. So negatives are gonna go out this way. And so negative five, 120 degrees would be right here. So um, negative values just make it go the opposite direction. So it doesn't land in the same um, degree uh, terminal side as you would think. It goes basically 180 degrees opposite for that when it's negative. So the next one, um, point C is three negative pi over six. So Pi over six, remember, is the same as 30 degrees. So if I want, and I'm gonna switch colors here, um, if I want to go three negative pi over six, that means I'm gonna go third circle out and um, negative 30 degrees. So right here is where I would land. This is point C, um, which again is three negative pi over six. For point D, it says two, zero degrees. So um, two means I'm gonna be on the second circle out. Zero degrees means I'm gonna be on that positive X axis. And because it's a positive radius value, we're gonna go on that second circle right here. So this would be two, 
0 degrees. So point D. And then finally, point E, 0 for the radius and pi over 4 for the um, angle. When my radius is 0, I really am going to end up um, kind of in the same spot regardless of what that angle is. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me choose from my color wheel here. Um, so even though pi over 4 would be like halfway there between the 30 and the 60, because the radius is 0, I'm still just going to land at that origin spot. So this would be point E, 0, pi over 4. All right, so hopefully that makes sense how to plot points. Now we're going to explore kind of some equivalencies within the polar coordinate system. So first it wants us to graph the point 5, 5 pi over 6. Um, so 5 pi over 6 is 30 degrees short of pi. And because it's 5 for the radius, I know I'm on the very last circle. So this is my original point. Um, that guy right there is 5 ah, and then 5 pi over 6. Sorry about the handwriting. Sometimes this does not cooperate exactly the way I want it to. It says then find other polar coordinates, r theta, of this point for which. So in this case, we want a positive r and we want theta to be between 2 pi and 4 pi. So that one um, to me doesn't seem too, um, too bad because if I want it to be between 2 pi and 4 pi, all I really need to do is go around the circle again. Um, so if I start at 5 pi over 6 and I add 2 pi, Remember that 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. So 12 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 is 17 pi over 6 um, is how far I would need to go for the angle. And because it says it wants R to be positive and land in the same spot, um, that means I'm going to keep that angle. Um, so really what I'm doing is I'm going all the way around the circle and then stopping at that same terminal side um, to end up on the exact same point, which again is what it wants. Other polar coordinates of this point. So we end up in the same place, but with different coordinates. So five would be my r, 17 pi over 6 would be my theta in this case. All right, next one, we want r to be negative this time, and we want theta to be between 0 and 2 pi. So if I want r to be negative, that means it's actually going to go in the opposite direction. So if I want it to land here, that means that the angle needs to land on this terminal side because in order to go 180 degrees in the opposite direction and still have it land in the same place as my original point, this needs to be my terminal side. So the angle between 0 and 2, um, zero and two pi is this one, which is pi over 6 short of 2 pi. So that is, if you look at your unit circle to help you too, that's 11 pi over 6. R needs to be less than 0, which means it's negative. And to get to the same spot, it specifically needs to be negative 5. So negative 5 would be the radius, and then 11 pi over 6 would be my theta there. Last one wants R to be bigger than 0, so positive but we want um, the value of theta to be between 0 or negative 2 pi and 0. So a negative angle um, is what we're looking for in this case. 
And if I want it to be a positive radius, um, then that means I do want to land on the same terminal side as the original, um, which is right here. So if I land in that same spot, but do so from a negative direction, I've gone one little um, radii tick mark past pi. So um, because these values are counting in pi over sixes, that'd be negative seven pi over six is the angle. And then because I did land on this correct terminal side, then I just need the radius to get it to this exact point. Um, which would, in this case, be positive 5. Because remember, if I made the radius negative also, the point would actually come out over here, which is not what we want in this case. All right, so hopefully those equivalencies um, make sense, and obviously we could come up with a bunch of different ones. Those are just some examples for you. Example 3, polar coordinates of a point are given find the rectangular coordinates. So in this case, um, this is telling us that 3 is my r and 5 pi over 3 is my theta. In part b, this is my r, this is my theta. And next to it, I've got a whole bunch of equivalencies here that we know um, that um, because the cosine of theta is x over r in the unit circle, which is what the polar coordinate plane is essentially built on, that also tells us that x is really r times cosine of theta. Um, so in this case, um, when I want to get a rectangular coordinate, that means I want x and y. So what I need to do is do r cosine theta to find the x and r sine theta to find the y. So x comma y is going to be r, which is 3, cosine theta comma r sine theta and then I'm just going to simplify so at 5 pi over 3 so that's 1 and 2 thirds pi we are in um, quadrant 4 where cosine is positive and we are at the 60 degree reference angle where the cosine would be 1 half so this is going to be 3 times 1 half Sine value is going to be negative in that quadrant, and it's going to be negative radical 3 over 2. And so then I'll just simplify. So my rectangular coordinates in this case are 3 halves and then negative 3 radical 3 over 2. So those would be my answers. Now those are in terms of x and y instead of in terms of r and theta. So same idea here for this next one. I know that x is going to be r times the cosine of my theta, this time given in degrees. 225 degrees is the 45 degree angle in quadrant 3. So quadrant three, um, sine and cosine are both negative there. And so that's going to give us negative two times. And at 45 degrees, both sine and cosine are radical two over two. And again, because we're in quadrant three, they're both going to be negative. Um, so in this case, um, x equals this, um, but y really is the same thing because negative 2 sine of 225 degrees also equals negative 2 times negative radical 2 over 2. So my x and my y are going to have the same value. A negative times a negative is a positive, um, and the 2s are going to cancel out, so I just end up with radical 2. 
And again, that in this case goes for both coordinates. So now I've taken polar coordinates and I have made them into rectangular. So example four, the opposite of that. We're taking the rectangular coordinates and we are finding them in terms of polar coordinates. So um, you may have to manipulate these in different ways, but the, these four are kind of, you know, where we're starting from when we're trying to go back and forth between polar and rectangular. So in this case, I have my X and my Y. So if I want to find R and find theta, these are the direct um, conversions. So in this case, r is going to equal the square root of 4 squared plus 4 squared. So 16 plus 16, um, which is 32. And so that gives me 4 radical 2 for my radius. For my theta, it's going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. So 4 over 4 in this case is 1. So when is the tangent equal to 1? Um, the tangent is equal to 1 when the sine and cosine are the same, which is going to be um, at 45 degrees. So at pi over 4, um, and one way, because the tangent is also positive in quadrant three, so the way to tell which, um, which of those two I should choose is based on where the original point is. So the original point for four would be in quadrant one, so I'm choosing that quadrant one angle. So that gives me four radical two for my r, and then pi over 4 for my theta in this case. So same idea in part B. So I look, um, and this is, um, in this case, not, um, uh, you could draw the triangle if you wanted to, if that helps you um, to know what quadrant we're in, because if I move left and then up, then the, my terminal side looks something like this. So um, I've gone 4 radical 3 in this direction to the left and then up 4. Um, so in this case, um, when I go to find my r, r equals the square root of each of these squared, so that'd be 16 here. This, I have the 16 times um, the 3, because radical 3 when I square it is just 3. Um, so 16 times 3, which is 48. So when I add those two together, that gives me 64. Square root of 64 is 8. So um, this, in this case, I can see is forming that 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you can use um, the... Um, Calculator, if you want to, um, we do want to list, unless it tells us otherwise, we should list our theta in radian form as opposed to degree form. If it tells you to use degrees, then use degrees. But if it doesn't, our default is radians. Um, so I know that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle because I've got that 1, 2, radical 3 ratio. Um, and since the four is the short leg, that means that this is um, the 30 degree angle in quadrant two. So um, that's a pi over six reference angle. So it's five pi over six is the um, theta. And again, um, I knew that because I drew the triangle. Again, you can use inverse tangent. Um, just make sure you end up in the right quadrant um, because this original point is in quadrant two, so we need to make sure that we have a theta that lands there as well, since our radius is going to be positive. 
All right, so now last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna convert equations. And this is gonna help us lead into what we're gonna do next week when we actually graph some polar equations. So um, we have to be able to convert back and forth to recognize format, all those kinds of things. So from the front, um, some key ideas that are on there that I'll just rewrite so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth. But X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta, and then um, R is the square root of X squared plus Y squared. Those are kind of my um, key things, but there are others um, over there on the front as well. So uh, it says the letters X and Y represent rectangular coordinates. Write each equation using polar coordinates. So every X and Y um, needs to be swapped out so that the only things I have remaining are operators, numbers, r's and thetas so i'm going to swap at out x for r cosine theta and so that gives me this statement here now when i write a polar equation we want it in the form r equals so in this case i would need to divide both sides by cosine theta in order to get r alone and then this would be my final answer, five over cosine theta. Um, so again, no x's and y's left, only r's and thetas, which means it's in polar form. In part b, I certainly could swap in um, r cosine theta, r sine theta. If I do that, I'm gonna end up um, needing to factor and use a Pythagorean identity. Um, the quicker thing, the quicker thing to notice is that I have this x squared plus y squared, which is identical to what's under the square root here. If I were to square both sides of that, the equivalent is r squared equals x squared plus y squared, um, which should make sense because that's the Pythagorean theorem in a triangle drawn you know, in um, these polar coordinates. So I can just swap out this x squared plus y squared for r squared, because those are equivalent. So r squared equals 121. Again, I need it to say r equals, so I'm gonna square root both sides, r equals plus or minus 11. All right, last one of this type. So here I am looking at 2x squared plus 2y squared equals 3. A couple different ways to do this. What my brain immediately does is says divide that by 2 because if I do that, then it looks a lot like what I just did. So now I have x squared plus y squared alone. So r squared equals 3 over 2. And so r equals plus or minus radical 3 over radical 2. And then I'll rationalize. So r equals plus or minus radical 6 over 2. All right, last section, last type of problem. The letters r and theta represent polar coordinates. Write each equation using rectangular coordinates. So again, need to use all of the things that we know about r, about um, r squared, and to attempt to get rid of our r's and thetas in favor of x's and y's. So again, Often there is more than one correct way to approach this. I um, here would um, go the route of squaring both sides, which again, I'm allowed to do that as long as I do the same thing on the left that I do on the right. So if I square both sides, that's gonna give me R squared equals 36. And so then, 
using what I discovered in the last example, I can swap out r squared for x squared plus y squared. So now hopefully you recognize that guy as an equation of a circle, um, which we could easily graph. In this section, we're not asked to graph anything other than points, but we will be graphing equations um, here next week. So last one, r equals sine theta minus cosine theta. So how I approach this, I do not want to square both sides again um, because in this case, um, this is a binomial. So I might end up with some um, weird, um, weird things. Although actually the sine squared and the cosine squared might um, end up actually canceling with the Pythagorean identity. Um, but my first instinct here was to just swap out using what I see up here. So I see up at the top cosine theta, sine theta. And so I see those here. I want to get those alone here and make a substitution. Um, so instead of sine theta, I am going to write y over r because that's what this equation would be if I got sine theta by itself. Then minus, do the same thing with x equals r cosine theta. This is x over r. Then instead of squaring both sides, I can get the r squared on the left by multiplying everything by r. And so in this case, it gives me that same desired outcome on the left side, but it also cancels my denominators on the right side. So now I have um, r squared equals y minus x. I know that I can substitute y or r squared for x squared plus y squared equals y minus x. Um, so this, it just says write each equation using polar coordinates. Um, so you could leave it like this if you wanted. Um, if you moved everything and got it equal to zero, that would be okay as well. So you could also, if you prefer, write this x squared plus x plus y squared minus y equals zero. Um, and either of these would be acceptable in this section. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you and um, get started on your practice so we can go over questions that you might run into.